Why did the blind man fall down the well? It's because he couldn't see that well. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on spring from COVID. And our guest this week, well, he is controlling the pests that prevent you from having a strong and profitable business. This is Small Business Celebration. Join us as we learn from successful business owners and successful business leaders about who they are, from where their business has grown, what they have learned, and where their successful business is going. I'm your host, Michael I. Roberts, and we're going to learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is David Oxley, the owner of Oxley Pest Control. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you very much. It's and, good to be here. And for visioneers who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? Hi, I'm David Oxley with Oxley's Pest Control. We make people comfortable in their homes and make sure that there's nothing bothering them as far as pests. Now, you'll notice that we are not here at Oxley's Pest Control if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're listening to this program on the podcast, we are sitting at 7501 Brundage Lane here in Bakersfield, California, also known as Drunko Party Rentals. And we have got a wonderful display of Thanksgiving table settings as well as other settings that you can have for you and your your family this coming holiday season so if you want to make this particular Thanksgiving and holiday season a little more special for the ones you care most about come to Geronco Party Rentals here at 7501 Brundage Lane or you can find them at GeroncoPartyRentals.com now why did you start Oxley Pest Control I was looking well I was with a large corporation right and they were making huge mistakes they had bought out a company that supplied all the cotton baling and ties here throughout the San Joaquin Valley, uh, Imperial, and Arizona. Mm. And their competition out of Chicago purchased them, made every mistake in the book, and was losing every bit of the business that they purchased. Right. So I sat there and thought, if this is a corporation, I can mess up my own future better than they did. <laughs> if my future is going to be ruined, it's going to be on my terms. Correct. And so I had some money saved. I was debt free. And I started looking for a business. And so I would talk to everybody and say, hi, my name is David Oxley. What do you do? How long have you been doing it? Do you enjoy doing it? Um, because I was looking for something that I could start. Mm. And one of my counterparts from earlier in the cotton industry out of Fresno, it looked like they were going to lose, the business was going to shut down. And I asked him, I said, so what are you going to do? And he goes, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do. My aunt and uncle have pest control. And I'm going to do what they do. They make a lot of money. They only work three days a week. <laughs> and I went, let me come take you to lunch. If I could only work three days a week, I, I think I'd sign up too. Absolutely. <laughs> and so I went and took him to lunch. It met my criteria. A lot of small businesses, reoccurring income, and a very easy entry. Hmm. So I thought, this is my business. I made up my business plan on the worst case scenario. And if I could make it on the worst case scenario, I could make it when things really went well. Sure. So I, st I had to find somebody to mentor me, somebody to train me. And so I got on the phone and said, hi, I'm David Oxley. I want to start my own business. Will you train me? And More specifically, you were talking to owners of pest control companies. Uh, pest control, So you're yes. calling who, who you plan to be their competition. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> And, you know, I got a lot of no's, uh, are you that. for real? Um, 
But, and, and I even had some say, well, come on over, let's talk about this. And they proceeded to tell me how terrible the industry was. Okay. I went, okay. And I got a hold of one gentleman over in Morro Bay. And I said, look, here's what I'm trying to do. I want to start my own business. And I'm willing to work hard. And he goes, well, what do I get? I said, I have my own truck. I have my own equipment. I just need the training. So basically free labor. Right. And he goes, well, come over and talk to me. <laughs> so, Name okay. me a business owner that's not going to <laughs> deny free labor. Well, in reality, he talked to his attorney. His attorney said, no, you have to pay him. So I got $4 an hour. <laughs> so, like, okay. That was minimum wage at the time. That was minimum wage then. Right. And we're, what, coming up on 15? Correct. So I had a household here. I had a house. I had to keep a trailer up over there. Uh, oh, and by the way, I took the lady of my dreams and took her to San Diego, proposed to her, and six months later, we were married. And then you told her? I told her, well, do you want to marry me? I don't have a job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in Morro Bay for two and a half years. And oh, by the way, I'm starting a business. So do you really want to marry me? <laughs> so, and of course, she said yes. Who wouldn't? Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so. But this, in all of this, the important takeaway is that the business that you chose yes. fit your criteria. Absolutely. Remind us again what that criteria is and why is it so important for those who are looking to start a second business or buy out another business, what those criteria are? So when I was in the cotton industry, okay. I'll give you a little background, we started with a bunch of little small cotton gins. Mm. And so if you lost the cotton gin to a competitor, there's no problem. You go down the street, you pick up one of his. Right. And you weren't hurt if you lost a small amount of your business. Then we started getting bigger gins and absorbing the smaller ones. And when you lost a large cotton gin, it was a lost, big deal you lost a lot of order right and it could almost close your business mm. so I watched that I have a degree in business with concentration marketing and I kind of looked at some of those principles that I had learned and that's when I sat there and went okay I don't want to lose my business because the the failure rate is huge right when you're first in the first three to five years um, and so I looked for something that would, I could go out and sell. Mm -hmm. um, the customers stay with you on an average of seven years. And 70% of the population uses a pest control professional. With all that criteria, and I went after the homeowners, uh, that was my bread and butter. If I got a commercial account, that was great. But I didn't rely on those because that could shut down my business if I lost that. Right. With the residential, it was slower to build, but it was a stable platform for me to go after. Who doesn't want a monthly subscription reoccurring <laughs> income for seven years? Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through probably six, seven recessions with one of those being very significant. Um, the housing market bubble, the dot-com bubble, uh, I think there was another real estate back in the early 90s bubble. There's always going to be something coming along. And I was told pest control is recession proof. There will always be bugs. And it has been that. Right. And it has been wonderful. And so when you're looking for a business, you got to be looking, okay, what do people truly need? I would have thought it was a, you know, not a necessity, but to a lot of people it is. We have heard over and over and over again that do what you love and yes. you'll never work a day in your life. It sounds like your criteria that you've just laid out omits that significantly. Did your enjoyment of your business come later? Well, here's what I love. We stopped the spread of disease. I worked for Mosquito Abatement going through college one summer. 
I understand that concept of disease. Uh, just with mosquitoes, we have West Nile virus. We have, you know, just there's a lot of things. There's, with mice, it's hantavirus. Um, and so I, I kind of enjoyed that idea. When you have a family and their home is their one sanction, you know, their, uh, their one place of comfort, then they need to be able to be able to bring their friends in, their family in. Um, and if it's full of roaches or fleas or even bed bugs, you know, you, you come in there and you wipe all that out and put their home back to a sanctuary again. That's important to me. And that, I, I love that. But I'm coming in at a reasonable amount of money and just making the, changing their life actually. Uh, just the social aspect of somebody being able to come over and have a meal or a Thanksgiving celebration. Or if you have a young daughter that's dating, who's she going to bring home if the house is full of cockroaches? Or the significant other walks away scratching and itching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In the next segment, we're going to talk about the one thing that Dave just mentioned, which is those incidentals, those surprises. And more specifically, how do you budget for those surprises in your business when you're budgeting for next year? But before we do that, if visioners want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? You can call us at 661-325-2687 or you can go at oxleypest.com Social media? You can look us up on Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to talk about incidental expenses, both large and small and what to do and prepare for them so they don't sink the ship when we come right back. Did you know it's that time of the year again? Tis the season for holiday portraits. Family, singles, couples, and even your pets. 5x7s, 8x10s, and holiday cards with envelopes. Book now and get 25% off all your additional orders of wall portraits and prints. Call 661-243-0931 or visit us at www.redcraneportraits.com. That's redcraneportraits.com. I'm here with Dave Oxley, the owner of Oxley Pest Control, and our visioner question comes from Adam who asks, we're looking at our P&L statement, our profit loss statement, and our incidental expenses are all over the place. How do you forecast your overhead for the coming year? I have a very good staff that does that. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair uh, enough. And no, actually, I'm, I'm looking at it, and then we'll discuss it, and we'll sit down. Um, but yeah, my percentages kind of fall it's real stable hmm. with what we do and so we might have to do a two dollar three dollar raise on what we're our increase on what we're charging um, to the customer so that we're staying where we're at and you've done that based <clears throat> upon past history of the last two three four years correct last 29 years <laughs> <laughs> okay all right fair enough <clears throat> yeah it it seems to follow a, a formula right and we just follow that formula and watch through it and then we're aware of what's going on around us. What happens when you have the major incidental expense that happens to your business? Because <laughs> yeah. the last segment you talked about how you know you like to have lots of small accounts so yes. that if one falls off it, it doesn't impact your business. But every business owner has a major event that happens at least once every two to five years. That's a, yes. a, a significant financial hit. What have you done to protect your business for when something like that happens? Number one way to plan for a budget. Okay. Get rid of debt. Right, okay. Keep working on the debt, making sure that uh, we used to rent a place, we now own a place. Right. We have only so many years left to pay on that. Um, main, maintaining our vehicles so that we're not having to finish paying it off, get rid of it, and then get another vehicle. We're, we have a fleet management 
uh, team that takes care of our fleet. Of uh, how many trucks? About 22 vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 22 vehicles. Imagine that. A little, little, little tiny business like yours. <laughs> and so when the fuel goes up, it really You hits. feel it. You feel it. Um, now, what happens when one of those trucks goes down? How, do you, how have you set up your business? Because, yeah, you've got 22 trucks, but, you know, how, how do you handle that? If my truck's not moving, it's not making money. Right. So you have to have X amount of spare trucks. Mm. And so when those start going down and you're going, okay, we got to get this one fixed right away, we got to get this done, so that you're not in a bind. Um, but occasionally, you have one that goes over the cliff. <laughs> Literally. We just recently had that. One of our guys was coming down the canyon and for whatever reason, went over the cliff, totaled the truck. Is he okay? Four stitches on his head and a bruise from the seatbelt. Wow, good. Well, lucky for him, <laughs> lucky for you. So my, my first question for him was, so do you believe in seatbelts now? <laughs> um, but it totaled our vehicle. Right, right. And it's like, okay, so we have a shortage of vehicles right now, not just in our company, but in the supply chain. There's no chips, so there's no vehicles. Right. Uh, so we had to actually scramble to find another vehicle. Uh, and the price has gone up. Right. They're offering me an unbelievable amount of money for my used truck. Right. Almost what I paid for it. Right. So now I'm out there looking, and so you've got to be prepared for that. What have you done to be prepared for that? Because this is an expense above and beyond your traditional you know, line items that you've been able to forecast for the past couple of years. What have you done to prepare for the truck going over the edge and all the other expenses associated with replacing the truck? Number one is insurance. Okay. Get the right insurance company that will respond quickly, that will get you paid back so that you have the cash in hand to go get the new vehicle because if a truck's not running, you're not making money. Right. That's where your expense is. Right. Um, <clears throat> insurance helps. But we don't replace our vehicles on a regular basis, so we don't always have a bill for vehicles. Mm. So we allot for X amount of vehicles to be um, in our expense column that we're having to pay on. The rest of them are paid off. We pay them off as early as we can. Sure. That way we're not vulnerable. Let's talk about the truck for a moment that went off the edge of the yeah. cliff and into the river because not in the river oh thank goodness next to the river <laughs> next to it. fair enough fair enough <laughs> but just as a, a quick summary what are some of the expenses unrealized expenses that you've had to pay for with this truck okay so fortunately it wasn't a major injury right because that could hit your workers comp right so we had two accidents that were not our fault in the past for three years, it was an extra $50,000 a year in workers' comp because it's on all the employees, not that one employee. Right. Um, so that could have been a major expense on that. Um, getting everything towed or you know lifted out of the um, uh, or up the uh, cliff. Right. That wasn't covered by insurance. It was. Okay. But that's an expense. Sure. Because you have to pay it first and then get reimbursed. Correct. Later. Okay. Then you have to make sure that the medical is taken care of. You got the, the vehicle getting out of there. Then you have to put him into another vehicle. Um, Replacing the vehicle that you were just talking about. Then you have to, and of course, the only vehicle we could find that met our criteria was out of state. <laughs> so now I have to get a plane ticket for an employee to go up there, and then the employee came down. And of course, he didn't want to go by himself, so I got another <laughs> ticket for the person that went with him. Right. Um, so it, there's another expense that you know you, you're just not planning for. Uh, then, of course, once you get it to the state of California, right, you now have to take it down to the DMV and get Be it smogged because it's out of state and licensed. <laughs> because it came from out of state, I had to get it weighed, smogged and inspect it. Um, do you know what it costs tax-wise for a vehicle? $1,200, $1,500. 
$3,381 for this vehicle. Right. And that wasn't in the purchase because it was purchased outside the state. At least I didn't have to pay for it there. Right. So we were able to bring it in and then pay um, that, those taxes while we were here. And we didn't wrap that into the uh, loan. We could have, but we chose not to because I don't want to pay interest on right. taxes. Right. So <laughs> it's just those little things that all add up to where it's like, you need to be prepared. Did you prepare yourself for this by having a reserve or did you have a line of credit with a, with a bank or a credit institution or, or how did you do that? We make sure that we have the line of credit. <clears throat> Our bank is wonderful about that. Um, but also my wife watches over everything financial in our business. She's very, very sharp. And we have a reserve for that. There is a reserve to make sure that there's any emergencies or unexpected expenses. And that's tough when you're first starting. Right. So everybody says, buy a used vehicle, not for when they're making you money. So we buy the new one, we get it paid off as fast as possible, and then we keep paying that fund and set aside for either expansion or in case there's an incident. And thank goodness my insurance company has been wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if I should mention their name or not, but they have been extremely wonderful and paid out over, but I think just over a million dollars on us. Wow. So yeah, those things are unexpected and you just have to keep putting money away, making sure that your expenses are down, uh, not growing too fast. We just about went bankrupt by growing too fast. Mm. <laughs> that was, that was kind of unexpected. <laughs> so. And you know what? We'll talk more about that when we come right back. Can you believe it? Next week is the beginning of season four of Small Business Celebration. And we couldn't have done it without you, Visionary Nation, because of all the great thoughts, the great comments, the great ideas for guests and things to talk about. And we encourage you to keep this up because without you, we wouldn't be enjoying the success we're having. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram with your thoughts, your ideas, things you'd like to see in the upcoming new season four here on Small Business Celebration. So reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. I'm here with Dave Oxley, the owner of Oxley Pest Control, and our vision question comes from Sarah who asks, with the upcoming holidays coming up, how do you remain mindful of other faiths and religions and be able to say something other than season's greetings? <laughs> well, we all have faith. Right. We all have our belief, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, well, unless you're an agnostic <laughs> or, or an atheist. And that's a belief. Right, sure. <clears throat> um, it, we just have to be true to what we, we, you know, who our faith is and who we are, and be respectful of others. Mm. How do you do that? Um, if you want to uh, tell me shalom, <laughs> fantastic, thank sure, you. Sure, sure. I understand what that means. Right. Um, if, you know, whatever that is, that blessing is, I accept that. Right. You know, it's meant in the right tone and it's meant in the right manner. Right. Uh, and when I say Merry Christmas, I mean it in the right manner as well. So we just have to be tolerant and help each other and uh, be loving, you know. So whatever blessing you want to put upon me, I'll take it. And hopefully you'll take the blessing that I put upon you. Now, one of the things you alluded to in the last segment, and just before we took the break here, is there was a point in your business that was very transformative not in how you, how you operated the business, but it transformed you as a person and your wife. What happened? In 2004, okay. we had five different things happen to us, to us, not f because of us. Okay. You get your first lawsuit. You haven't been successful as a business owner, by the way, <laughs> until you get sued, right? <laughs> so, and like going, what do you mean? It wasn't our ladder, it's his ladder. <laughs> it was a pull down ladder. Right. Um, 
but yeah, it was just getting that first lawsuit and you worry about it. You can't sleep at night and then you realize, oh, I have insurance. The insurance company is going to send me an attorney and it'll be taken care of. Um, then we had car accidents. We had um, employees going on unemployment. Well, I've never had that one done before either. You know, what does that mean? How does that go? Or getting sued by an employee. Anybody can sue you. That doesn't mean they're going to win. Um, but the biggest part was payroll tax. We had gotten to, to, in the growth of our business, and with the bookkeeper we had, we weren't keeping up with the payroll. We weren't, we weren't forecasting uh, properly right. on where our forecast, our, our on where our payroll taxes were gonna be. Right. But yeah, you have all these things come at you in one year. For me, I'm very faith-based, and I learned to pray, uh, I, I learned to pray for protection. Ah. And my faith grew quite a bit that year. Mm. Uh, you know you have faith, but then when it's tested, you really understand it better. Uh, and so the, we, that's where we've gone. How did you learn how to accept that and, and deal with it better? <laughs> it's kind of like thinking about death. Okay. You know it's coming. Right. And the minute you make peace with it, you're okay. So is this how you approach challenges that you face now versus when you first started your business? Well, actually I kind of did this when I first started it as well. Okay. But how is it different now? Well, at, going back to the beginning, okay. I'm 31 years old, actually 30 at the time, I believe, and it's like, okay, I can quit my job. If I fail, I have time to recover. Right. And so it's like, if I fail, what's my second plan? And that's kind of been the theme all the way through the business. Mm. Fortunately, we haven't failed. <laughs> so, but if you have something show up that you're not expecting, such as a lawsuit or uh, a truck going over the cliff or whatever, it's that prep. It's, and if I do fail, if I lose the lawsuit, what is the upside, what's the downside? If I get sued by an employee, what's the upside, what's the downside? That's when you make sure you have an HR, you have insurance, you think about all the unintended consequences and you make contingencies for those. Whether it being covered by insurance or making sure you're, you have no debt that you could pay it off, whatever comes your way, or having a reserve. When you were going through and you were learning from your mentor on how to build a pest control business, were these the kinds of things that he taught you as part of his mentorship, or was this something that you kind of had to figure out on your own, or did you, how, how did you learn these lessons? I had many mentors. Okay. I made a really strong network around me, and some of what, some of what I learned was from observing others' failures. Sure. So it's Sometimes like, failure is the best teacher and example. And as well as for myself and my employees. Mm. You can make a mistake, hopefully you can recover from it and then learn. Just don't make the same mistake over and over. Um, so we had to, when you make a mistake, you gotta look, okay, so payroll tax. Oh my goodness, they are relentless. And so when they're coming at you, it's like, okay, how can I get out of this? How do I get them paid off as fast as possible? And then how do I not have it happen again? Well, we went to a payroll service. They pulled out the uh, taxes. They told us what we were going to do. They helped mentor us through that. So they've been a mentor in one way. Um, other, em other employers have mentored us. Uh, you're just always looking for information. And when I was working in the, in the business, that was really hard. When I'm, out, I'm the guy out spraying, it's hard to get a minute and I would have to take and go off to, there, there's a pest academy. Right. So every summer you go to the pest academy, 
you have a lot of mentors there. They're teaching you, training you. But you're looking for that network of people to say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought mm. about this? Um, the right accountant. And you can outgrow who your accountants are. Right. And so this one is good at this level. This one is good at that level. And so we were always looking and trying to improve um, how much information we had and making sure we were staying out of trouble. We're here at Duranco Party Rentals, and part of the reason is for a selfish plug for the holidays for Duranco <laughs> and the Thanksgiving holiday season as well as the other holidays. Thanksgiving's coming up. What are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for my faith because that gives me the foundation of who I am and what I live for. Uh, and then I would be most thankful for my wife. She is wonderful and she is my reason for getting up every day. She put up with you not being there for six months to a year while you learned how to run a business. Two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half years, okay. I would come home every weekend. Sure. So we, we, we eased into marriage. Um, but then also a, a big motivator for me was for my kids. Right. If I could start my own business, I could have time to go to their games. I could go to their their band concerts or their the my daughter was in plays. You know, it was it was fun to go to those things. But family is extremely important. I'm one of four kids. My wife is one of eight kids. Wow. So we have a lot of family. Sure. We have a lot of nieces, nephews. Um, I have now a lot of brothers. I was the only boy growing up. Now I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Um, but in this last year, we've, we've lost a few family members, mm. um, which is part of the life cycle. And so, yeah, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to this Thanksgiving for gathering the family around and, uh, and having that time together. It's very important to us. Making sure that, hey, where are you at in life? You know, what, what are you doing? Are you getting to buy a house? Are you, uh, you, know, are you finishing college? You know, what are you, what are you looking to do? How is your role going to be playing in this community? Because you got to be part of the community, and it's, that gives purpose to them as well as each and every one of us. If Visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They can give us a call at 661-325-2687, or they can email us at info at oxleypest.com, or they can... Go to our website at oxleypest.com. Social media would be Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Well, Dave, thank you very much for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it. And I'll be right back with my final thought. Did you know it's that time of the year again? Tis the season for holiday portraits. Family, singles, couples, and even your pets. 5x7s, 8x10s, and holiday cards with envelopes. Book now and get 25% off all your additional orders of wall portraits and prints. Call 661-243-0931 or visit us at www.redcraneportraits.com. That's redcraneportraits.com. Russian Blue Logic. Several weeks ago, our neighbor's dog had a litter of puppies, and there's a fence between our neighbor's yard and ours, and there's a gap about that far between the two fences. Just wide enough for a puppy. And as those puppies ventured into the brand new world a couple days ago, you guessed it, they started going in through that gap and exploring the wonders of the brand new world before them. And as they did so, they could looking at each other, comparing one's activity to the other, and being rambunctious, they would try to one-up each other and try to climb the fence, and when that wouldn't work, they would try something else, and always venturing and stepping on top of each other and climbing and growing, and, and trying to see everything and accomplish everything that the world had to offer them. Meanwhile, my Russian blue cat, Sasha, sat on our side of the fence and watched them. And in customary Sasha fashion, he stood up, stretched, and said, Nyaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Now, normally, that's the cue for the dogs to start yipping and yapping and yapping and yipping. But this case, the puppies were stunned. They didn't know what to do. And Sasha very calmly sauntered across the yard into the house and took in a meal. And that got me to thinking. Marcus Aurelius once said, ambition means tying your well-being to what others say or do. Sanity means tying it to your actions. We've got the holiday season coming up. We've got those inevitable conversations of one-upmanship. We've also got those conversations of what are you doing with your business to keep up with so-and-so? What are you doing to accomplish this or that or the other thing? Maybe you need some Russian blue logic. Maybe what you need to do is go, Mah. saunter across the yard, walk inside the house, and take in a meal. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with David Oxley, the owner of Oxley Pest Control, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week for the beginning of Season 4. It's what motivates us, you know, because first off, I want to take care of my, first off, I want to take care of my wife, Secondly, I want to take care of my kids. Uh, and then there's our, our extended family. <laughs> Let's take a one, one second here, because I don't think you're going to be able to splice it in between each ring. <laughs> I wasn't moving in between. <laughs> All right. Let's, let, let me just ask the question over again. Okay. We'll start. <laughs> oh, that one's going to end up in the credits, I know. All right. So. <laughs>